Hey traders, John Howell here. Uh, this is just a video. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm just turning the recorder on to actually get myself ready for the week. And I'm just gonna be looking at all the stock market. I'll be looking at the crypto market. I might look at some Forex, the Australian market, um, you know, the gold and silver indexes as well too, gold, silver. I'll be looking at the fear and greed index. I'll be just doing my analysis. And this is what I normally do most weeks to get myself prepared for the week. But I'm turning the recorder on to give you guys a bit of a behind the scenes look of how I'm looking at things. So I'm just gonna do it live on the spot. So let's get straight into it. Don't place a trade based on what you'll see in this video because there is no guarantees of making a profit in the market. It takes you a long time to become a good trader. So this video here is just to educate you to become a much better trader. Alrighty traders, so let's get straight into it. Before I do start guys, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am running a, um, I'm actually, I've actually opened up some spots for a one-on-one -on -one coaching call for 90% off. And also I am also giving away for anyone that, that takes that 90% off for a one-on-one -on -one coaching call. I'm also, I'm also throwing in my master trader lab, which is valued at $2,000 you also get that for free as well. But I'm only doing it for the first 10 people. I've had some people ask me for some one-on-one -on -one coaching call help, but so uh, I don't normally do this, but when I do, I charge $1,000. So you can actually get it for just $97 today. Again, it's just for the very first 10 people. So to 10 people only, then I'm gonna shut it down because I don't want I don't want to book, book up too many people. So the first 10 people only guys actually get it for just $97. You get one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. I will help you with your current situation. We'll do one-on-one -on -one coaching call. Plus also you get the Master Trader Lab Vader, $2,000. You get that for free instantly as well too while we're waiting for our appointment um, and all that sort of stuff. Again, guys, very first 10 people. Um, and you'll see the very first link in the description, go get access to that right now. So starting off with the good old S&P 500. So the the, the, the big thing that I'm, I'm coming across right now when it, when it comes to the stock market, and the big thing here, right, is like we can see headlines, right? There's a lot of headlines that's happening. So if we go to, let's go to this one here. So I'm just gonna bring up, I'm just gonna bring up this here, right? So I can bring up zero, Oy, where'd you go? Did, did I delete it? I hope not, there we go, cool, right? So we can bring up Zero Hedge, um, you know, we can see all these different articles, right? So Pfizer and so on and so forth. And we can see peak inflation, as you can see, right? So the peak inflation and Fed policy relationships and so on and so forth. And we can go through these articles and again and again, all right, is, um, is auto inflation the key to the markets? Uh, you know, and so we've got Bloomberg here as well too. So let's actually spend all this time going through Bloomberg you know, uh, what's Bill Gates doing here? Bill Gates says the bear says economy bears have strong argument to slow down. Oh, Bill Gates, eh? And the thing is this, guys, isn't this interesting, right? The reason why we do all this research is we're trying to find what? Let's go market watch. Ooh, market watch, right? So I, I hardly ever, I actually have a folder that goes through this, but Will Fed go too far? Dow violates swings, put investors on the outlook for a recession signal. Um, the, why do we spend so much time reading all these articles? Uh, we're trying to find some sort of sense of certainty, right? We're trying to find some sort of sense of what's, what's going on with the markets, right? Um, and the thing is, is that what happens with the economy and sometimes what the market does is like, that, does, does, that doesn't make sense. Why is Alibaba worth 300 and now it's worth less than 100? You know, like, like, hang on, that just doesn't make sense. Like, you know what I mean? Like the value so on and so forth. Um, and so we're always trying to find some sort of sense of certainty, but what is the big mistake that a lot of people do when they're, when, when they're doing this? It's, it's, good to, it's good to go out there and see what's actually going on in the world, right? If you, wanna, if you wanna spend time doing that, do that. But what is the big mistake about what, investors do right when they're reading these articles firstly is it actually true right for example oh my goodness property market crashes that's the headline oh it's, it's oh my goodness this is the start of the big this is the start my property market crashes and then you actually just go into the article and the article says oh we had a two we had a we had a five percent pull we had a five percent pullback in the property market i'm not saying this is happening right we had we had a five percent pullback in the property market uh for the last three months i'm not saying that's that's the case but i'm just giving you an example right so we can see that through there and, and the whole thing about this is that one it's not actually as bad as it's a, a, a lot of it actually seems 
But also, secondly, we're seeing things as they are, not what's coming down the road, right? So as investors, if we could, if you, if we read a lot of these articles, yeah, okay, cool. Let's actually get a good understanding of what's happening right now. But as investors, we're trying to see from a from investors or even traders, right? We're trying to see what we're trying to see what's likely to come. Okay, this is what's happening right now from a news article. Oh my goodness, on the weekend, you should have seen Elon Musk. He tweeted poo. Okay, and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like okay. So me as an investor, I'm trying to I'm trying to see where are we going. What's likely to happen? Not based on the headlines, but you know, on, on what's happening, um, you know, and then and then I can start to make some decisions behind that. So that's always the biggest. Mis- that's always the reason why I don't spend a lot. Actually, I spend very little time. Actually, that this to be honest, I think that's the first time, maybe this year that I've actually brought up all those different. I used to look at all those headlines. I'm just like I'm spending all this time, but it's not actually helping me get to where I want to go, which is actually make money. All right, so I just normally just just close it down. So I wanted to start off with that because it just it, it go we go through that process. So, um, so looking at the actual stock market, um, let's go look at this here. So let's actually look at the S and P five hundred. Let's actually zoom out to the weekly chart perspective and let's actually just see what's going on here. Now, the big thing that I'm noticing right now is we're not getting a falling off a cliff sort of action. But John, don't you see? We've got the beautiful head and shoulder formation. Oh my goodness, it's, it's such a beautiful head and shoulder formation. We've got the lows, we've got the lows, we've got the lows. It's broken the neckline. Actually, the neckline would be, the neckline would actually be somewhere through there. So if I actually did do the neckline on that head and shoulder formation, oh, we have the shoulder and we have the head and we have the shoulder. Now, this is actually quite a possibility, guys, right? I'm not saying this is not, but... This is actually quite a possibility. Now, here's the thing that we see with this here, okay? We can see that this is a head and shoulder formation. So there's there's two things that I'm watching to say, okay, what's the market likely to do? The first thing is that we're probably gonna get some sort of a rally. What is that rally here? What do we actually get this coming week or this coming couple of weeks? Do we actually get something like this and then a rally up and then maybe a rally down and, and then we start to see a fall through the floor? The thing is, is um, you can see here that we haven't started to get strong selling yet. Okay, we haven't started to get the strong selling yet. So do we actually continue to make a high, a lower high, and another lower high? Do we actually continue to see that moving forward? If we do, then yeah, we, we're probably going to be, you know, we're probably going to be getting ready for, for a, a pretty big pullback. But I'm noticing that even though we're developing some sort of a head and shoulder formation through here, we're still just going overall just, it's just sideways action. We haven't had any real strength on any moves, right? Um, and so, and what I mean by that is that we really haven't had any, you know, any um, any very big sort of strong selling legs. If we go to the daily charts, um, you can see here we've got strong down, strong up, strong down. We're not really getting uh, any good strong sign of of a market movement, right? We're getting a lot of volatility um, and that's it. So the big thing for me is my number one rule in my trading system that I trade is trend analysis. Who's in control? So if I actually look at the actual, the yeah, we look at the weekly charts, okay? But if I'm looking at the daily charts now, who's in control right now? Are the buyers in control? Meaning uh, upward trend, or sellers in control, meaning downward trend, right? Sellers in control means that we're in a downward momentum here. So if I actually look at the stock market and I go to what's happening right now, we can see that we have what? We have a high, we have a lower high, we have a low, we have a lower low through here. Maybe that's even a high point through there. But look what happened here. Now we have a higher high, now we have a lower low. So who's in control right now? No one, right? And this is the worst time because this, the market's not giving us any sign of, okay, the sellers are definitely in control or the buyers are definitely in control. So with all that being just said, the thing is, is that I'm watching to see what the market does because if the market does get a very, if we start to get a very, if we get a, a movement up and it's a very weak movement and we start to roll over and we start to do something like this, 
then yeah, we're probably, that's now we're starting to get, okay, we went from, you know, very indecision process through here, and then it's a lower high and breaking down. So the first thing is that we, we may get a little bit more of a capitulation day through here, but I do see a bit of a pullback coming. How strong is that pullback? If it's weak and we start to get this rolling over period, then that's not gonna be good for the stock market. But regardless of what everything does, regardless of what, the, the reason why I brought up the whole headlines and article in the news things is this, is that if the market starts to do this and we start to get a very strong movement up and we come back down and then we start to do something like this, guess what? It doesn't matter how much you think about inflation or how much you think about the stock market or how much you think that everything's bad and new, everything's bad. The fact of the matter is, is that we have a low, we have a higher low, and we're breaking past these previous highs. The trend analysis of the market is telling you what's going on. It's a trend analysis perspective, right? And it's our job just to listen to the market, not the not the talky talky, right? The talky talky is um, one opinion. Talky talky uh, is there to grab your attention, and some talky talky is about what has already happened, not what's going to happen, right? Think about that. A headline is a talky talky about what's happened, which may not be as bad as that that the article says when you dig deep. But it's not talk that that the articles don't talk about what's likely to happen. Because if they say, Oh my goodness, things are starting to unravel, we've got we you know we've got a big pullback. Okay, that's what's happening right now. What's likely to happen? So if we start to get something like this coming through coming through the rest of May and into June, then guess what, guys? We're going to have a second half of a quarter quarter explosion. Now, with my big macro thesis and analysis and all that sort of stuff, when, I, when I'm looking at that, I do believe that the second quarter is going to be an explosion to the upside. I just see so much negativity and so much fear in the marketplace that I just see... Things are uh, things are not looking looking good there. If we have a look at the fear and greed index, hey Russell Brunson. Um, uh, if we have a look at the fear and greed index, we're not really getting to the extreme fear yet. So we haven't got that capitulation type of a move yet um, to find a bottom. So we've probably got a bit more downside to come. So looking at the fear and greed index, if we have a look at this here. Now, the fear and greed index is, is composed of all these different things here, right? Um, straight, um, yeah, all these different things here. So one is extreme greed, so the, the, stock, the stock price breadth. Put the core ratio, extreme fear. Options are contracts that gives, oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Is it, um, when the ratio puts to cause is rising, it's a usually a sign that investors are growing more nervous. A ratio above one is considered bearish. The fear and greed index usually usually uses a bearish option ratio as a signal, right? So we can see here that we actually had uh, April, we actually had a lot of, and now it's actually pulled back a little bit through here, as you can see. So we've actually pulled back just a little bit, but we're still at, still at the extreme fear reading for the last sort of couple of months there. That simply just means that there's a lot of people buying put options. That's definitely true on the on the Russell as well too. Uh, market volatility, which is obviously the VIX, um, safe havens, and then junk bonds index as well too. So if we go back up to uh, the actual line, like so that the timeline, you can see the timeline perspective, and you can see that anything if we, we're probably going to get a, a capitulation day coming to get us down in this region through here when it comes to the fear and greed index. We're gonna get a lot of, lot more fear coming in, and then we're probably gonna to start to see a bit of a bit of a slingshot move to the upside. Now when I say slingshot move to the upside, guys, I mean just a nice reversal. It could be hard, it could be fast, it could be just a, okay, we've got a pullback and now we're getting ready to go again, all right? Someone said to me, oh, John said there's a slingshot opportunity, it's slingshot, now it's a buying opportunity. Uh, you realize that both are the same thing, right? When the market pulls back, it's getting ready to go up right? Whether that's fast or whether it goes up, it's just pulling back to go up. So I believe that's the reason why I believe there's a, 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 a capitulation coming in the markets. And if we do get the capitulation, we start to get the feed back down to here, guys, then get ready for a strong reversal in the markets because it is coming. So that's looking at that through there. And once again, looking at the, if we just look at the actual short term analysis, you can see we're on a very, 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 very sort of strong rising now. We've got a bit of a double bottom through here, but again, I wouldn't be too surprised to see a bit of a, a bit of a, um, we may get a little bit more volatility through here, 
but I wouldn't be too surprised to get a bit more of a capitulation and then a complete reversal out of the markets. Um, break, because once we start to break past these lows here, uh, it's going to be, uh, people are going to get really, really, really nervous. And again, watch that fear and greed index because it's really going to tell you. If we have a look at the NASDAQ as well too, uh, the NASDAQ has been, uh, NASDAQ is definitely, the NASDAQ is the one that's the most oversold out of all the indices and all the indexes through there. So if we have a look at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ has pulled back how much from its, from its lows? Let's have a look here. Okay, so we've almost just done a 50% pullback, which is actually a very, it's actually a very good thing, right? So this could just be, because remember guys, if we go to the monthly charts here, we look at the monthly charts, what is the monthly chart actually doing us? Uh, doing us? There you go. There's, 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 there's a little, there's a little um, thing for you, right? Doing us, right? It's doing what? If we squeeze our charts up, oh my goodness, John, you don't understand, right? What could this big monthly chart be telling us? Big move up, pull back, and then away we go, right? So that's what we, that's that's what we could be getting through here, which I do believe we're going to get going to be getting, right? But that's the big monthly charts there. Then we dig down in the weekly charts and then the daily charts and so on and so forth. So we are still getting that through there. If I squeeze, let's actually go to the one year worth of data the data. Let's actually just take everything off the screen here for a minute, because I just want to just see. Okay, so I'm looks, I'm just trying to find some 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 trend lines in play through here. So we did have that through there. We, that's no longer valid. If I'm just I'm just using the major highs and major low points. So if we have this point through here, we can see that, that we have that going in through there. So that means if we did get above that fourteen thousand level again, that'll tell us that the Nasdaq is now getting very bullish again. If we did did a bit of a bit of a bit of a Chanel. And you can see we're definitely in the, the ranges is definitely through there somewhere um, on this channel that the actual, the NASDAQ is actually in right now. Um, looking at that, if we do, you can see here now, now is the NASDAQ gonna be creating a bit of a false breakout? Because what I'm seeing right now is I'm seeing, there's actually a very, yeah, look at that there, okay? So the NASDAQ has done what? The NASDAQ has had a very, 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 very big move down. If we actually bring this up through here a little bit, what are we seeing? What are we seeing? We're seeing we have these low points, so support, support, support. The market does this, okay, guys? You've got to, you've got to be very careful because if you are short and this happens, you not, you, you, I don't care what you think. You need to be out of the market. Like, like, I, I need to be out, okay? So if you are buying put ups down here, which is the worst thing to do, and then the reason why is because simple trend analysis, when the market goes down a lot, we're getting ready for at least a pullback, right? And that's what's happened through here. We had a... We had a drop down and then now we're getting ready for we're getting ready for at least at least a pullback through here. But we have the support, 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 and we had all that support level through there as well too. And now we're getting what? We're getting a very strong breakdown through here, aren't we? What happens? What happens if the NASDAQ does does start to turn around and we start to get back above here? What is this here? This could be what? One, an end of trend indicator. But also, secondly, um, it could be at this is actually this is actually a very strong sign of a, of the of this downward leg coming to an end. So this actually could be a false breakout on on the Nasdaq. Now there's actually uh, there's probably a bit of a trend line going through there as well too. We're probably getting something like that going on. I'm just trying to find the right angle. Yeah, so somewhere th somewhere through there, I would say. Uh, we're getting this sort of squeezing up momentum, as you can see, we're squeezing up and squeezing up through there. So, and and again, again, traders, the big thing about the markets right now is guess what? We're getting a very big movement down, very big movement down. So we're likely to get at least a bit of a retracement. As you can see, that's what the market does at stair steps. So we're, I would like to get a capitulation real early, like straight away and then the turn around, and then a turnaround Tuesday. And then, then we may be able to see, but the thing about the NASDAQ is uh, if we get something like this, and then we start the stair step out like that. Oh, then guess what we have now? Major bottom in the markets, and we're now likely to see a really, really, really nice move up. So um, that's what I'm seeing through there. So we could we uh, there's we could be getting some sort of a false breakout on the Nasdaq, which is really interesting. Looking at the uh, let's have a look at the uh, the Dow Jones, and let's actually just bring up this pearl through here. Uh, let's go to the one year worth of charts. Actually, let's squeeze it up a bit more. I'm just trying to see if it's, yeah, we're getting a low, a lower high. 
Again, probably the, the point I'd have to use is somewhere through there. We do have maybe something going on through there. Maybe. Uh, it's probably 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 a bit of a bit, still a bit of a strong support level where we are right now around that sort of double bottom area. So the the the, NAS, the, the Dow Jones is actually holding up quite strongly. It's, it hasn't actually had, as you know, the the Nasdaq actually had retraced fifty percent of the upward leg, and now we're doing that. So let's go have a look at the shorter term, of what's going on right now. Um, absolute short term, we're actually squeezing up into a triangle pattern here. We're actually sort of squeezing, as you can see, we've got this sort of sort of support level through here. We're coming back down, but we're starting to get this sort of squeezing pattern. Um, so that's going to be really interesting this to, to sort of keep an eye out for what's going on there. Let's go have a look at the Russell. Uh, Russell, once again, bit of a move down, hit the resistance, come back down, and now we're actually continuing down. So um, I wouldn't be too surprised to get a bit more downside out of Russell. The big thing I'm looking for is this level through here. That'll be the, the, the big key level. Let me actually take uh, that off the screen now. Let's take that off the screen. Let's actually see if that's actually a bit of a bit of a channel in the markets. Maybe, maybe. The big thing, the reason why I've got that line through there is because it'll tell me that if the, if, if the Russell does actually start to turn around and we start to get a move back to the upside and we start to get a back above 200, then that'll tell me that that one, this support level through here, is this, this is now, if we did get something like that, if we did get a, a reversal, we started getting like that, guess what? That's probably gonna be the end of trend, meaning this downward leg, and then we're probably gonna start to see an upward leg from there. So the end of trend is is something big through there of what we're seeing. Uh, let's go have a look at the uh, gold and silver. Big picture on gold is that we're just still squeezing up into these legs through here. We are building a little bit of strength on gold. Um, it's very, very, fr I know gold investors have been very frustrated when it comes to this, but we have these high lows through here. Uh, and we could be getting another higher low. As you can see, we're still compre we're still compressing and compressing and compressing. So this could just be another higher low before we start to get a very strong move up. That's that weekly chart. If I go into the daily chart now, and I, I can still see that the big key for me that I'm looking for to say, okay, are we, when are we likely to start that upward leg if we are going to do that? And that'll be this level through here. As you can see, that level through there, which is around about that 19, 1,920, you can see that we've actually got a lot of, uh, a little bit there, but mostly all through there, the support, the support here became resistance. So if gold does start to do this, and we start to get back above there, Guess what that means? Now this is what? A false breakout. And then we're likely to at least make a move back up towards the 2000 level. Uh, and then if once we do that, then we're probably gonna make a move back up to all time new highs. So once we start to get this move around, remember this, this whole low through here could be just another high low on those weekly charts, the big forest from the trees and so on and so forth. So that's a big thing we're looking at there with gold. Uh, silver right now is, Silver's very, very, very frustrating. It's the reason why I, I, I'm not personally in silver myself. Uh, I'm, and I just, it's just, silver's very, very, very frustrating. But we are still getting uh, a squeezing up of, 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 of this triangle pattern through here. We, we did actually have some sort of a triangle pattern, but this thing is just now morphing into something else, which is just this, this sort of triangle pattern through here. If we go to this weekly charts. You can see what we're what we're morphing into through here. So, this overall thing could be could be just one big massive sort of bull flag through here. And again, it's going to be really interesting because once we do break out through this level through here, that's when silver's really going to go crazy because we've had a lot of time through here. And we're still we're still doing that that time. Time simply means just it's just it's just going sideways. Okay, price is pri when the market's making price is obviously when the market's moving up or down. And time is when the market's just moving sideways. When it's, when it's done a lot of sideways movement, a lot of time, a lot of resting, and we're still doing that right now. We're just very, very volatile within this movement here. Once we start to get a very strong breakout, we're gonna see something like this again. Uh, so that's gonna be really key to watch out for with the silver market. Let's go have a look at the GDXJ. 
uh, sorry, the GDX. And the GDX is still just, uh, we're getting very, very, very close to a turning point, I believe. Very, 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 very close to there. Uh, we are looking at, there is a probably a Fibonacci retracement going on through there. Let's actually just check that out. Um, you can see here now we're getting down there, really down to that, that 50 to 60% level through there. Um, so I do believe we're going to start to see a really, really, really strong turning point coming uh, coming out of uh, the mining sector. Very big, strong move down. So but let me take that off the screen through there. We're starting to get a very nice upward trend. So we, we, um, this breakout of this triangle pattern, isn't it interesting? Because this here looks very similar to what, what Silver's doing right now. Silver... Uh, is doing the exact silver's doing the exact same thing. We're coming down and we're just in this sort of sideways movement. As you can see here, look at this here. We got the breakout, got a very strong move up, got a strong move down. If we can start to do something like this, then we start to get a nice move up. If we start to get that over the next couple of weeks, then the meat and potatoes, we're going to get ready. There's going to be a really big move to come um, out of this move through here because now we've gone from no one in control, right? Just what that's why I said with the stock market earlier, right? When some when there's no one in control. Guess what? It's very hard to give us a good time, but if we start to get this, buyers are in control, and then we're gonna see, we're, you know, we're gonna see some really, 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 really big moves. GDXJ uh, is one that um, I obviously always watch. Same sort of thing as well too. We had a very strong move out. We're getting a strong pullback through here. So again, we're getting very, very, very close to a nice turning point um, in the markets through there. So. Um, yeah, I, I believe we're getting ready for it, but we need to wait for that turning point to come. Once we can start to get that turning point to come through there, um, then that's going to be quite nice to see what actually happens with the GDX. But the, again, the big thing for me is this, is the big thing for me is this, is that if we can start to get a nice move up, even if, if, we, can, if we can get a gap up, then that, that's going to create this as an island reversal. Um, and then island reversal just simply means it's a reversal pattern. So we this gap down, it gaps, we, we move in the direction, we move, 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 we gap down, we create the island, just go sideways and we get back up. And then if that happens, if this, if we do get a bit of a gap up, then guess what? We're probably likely to start to see this thing take off. Now the big picture with the GDXJ is this, is we are, if we can get what I've just said there happening, right? A bit of a reversal point through here. Remember where we're coming from here. We're coming from what? really not much going on. And remember, when not much goes on, guess what's coming, all right? That's why I said with silver, right? Because we haven't been doing a lot, just been up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. That's actually a good thing. Frustrating for investors right now, but once we start to get that breakout, which, you could, we, which we could be watching, then we can start to say, okay, cool, now we're getting ready. Same for this thing here. Look, I see a big move up. We've got this sort of bull flag formation, and now we're getting the breakout. This could be the start of that upward trend. And if it is, then we're, we're, we're gonna see that higher low, and then it's gonna be absolutely just crazy. Let's go have a look at the GDX, uh, sorry, SIL, should I say? The SIL, and it's a bit of a lackluster dug, isn't it? It really, really is. It's not, we're not really developing any good strong, we're at, at a level of long-term support level through here, as you can see, so we're potentially at a long-term long level of support, uh, it's just it's just very very ugly the silver mining the silver stocks and especially this SIL SIL has been that that lackluster dug that it's just been in a downward trend we haven't really we haven't really changed trend and now we're actually down through here so we're probably going to get a continuation through here but the thing the big thing to watch out for with the SIL is that once we get a bit of a bit of a continuate once we get this breakthrough here it's we're probably it's it's probably going to be a false breakout because um, we're going to break through there. And the reason why is because we've been down for some time. So they're probably going to fall break out and then we may see a, a bit of a, a V bottom or we may just get a movement down. Let me get another tool here. We may get just a movement down, a movement up and then a movement down again. I firmly believe that the second half of this year is going to be really bullish for a lot of things, meaning silver, gold, mining sector um, and then also... Um, Silver, gold, yeah, and probably in the crypto market as well too. Uh, I believe second half is going to be really, really good because I do believe we're going to start to see a turning point with inflation. I know other people out there don't believe that, but I do see uh, a possible turning point coming in the inflation and all that sort of stuff. So 
again, but I could be wrong through there. But I'm, again, I could be wrong with my thesis. But that's why like I'm waiting for the market to tell me, okay, we're turning around and so on and so forth. And then I'm looking to jump on that myself. Uh, let's go have a look at Bitcoin through here. Um, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin has continued to just, yeah. Bitcoin's frustrating for most people, isn't it? And this is a big thing, guys. It's a big thing. Remember, big thing about investing. The thing that always comes to my mind with Bitcoin is that when the herd mentality is rushing about everything, don't go do that. Just don't go do it, All right? The herd mentality over the last, say, 12 months, look at this here, major, major tops, major tops. And guess what? The herd mentality was rushing in. Right here, through this move up here, guess what? 50% of all accounts were open in the crypto market right here. And then look what happened. Look what's happening now. Because what? Oh, it had a big move. Pullback. It's getting ready for another big move. It's going to go to a million dollars this time. And then, and so on and so forth, right? So don't get, and this is where I love, love, love looking for patterns like gold, like the mining sector, like silver, that haven't been doing anything for a long time, just been volatile up and down, up and down, but going sideways. Why? Because we're getting ready for a big breakout, and 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 you know, and the, and the, and the, the people that the thing that people love don't get don't, don't touch that. The people that people thing that thing, thing that people hate touch that, right? Because again, if you go back to Bitcoin days, remember Bitcoin for a couple of years did what? <laughs> Look at this here. We're, you know that the talking heads weren't doing anything with Bitcoin through here, right? 2019, 2020. Guess what? Yeah, they really didn't do anything. This is the time that we should be getting excited, right? What markets not doing anything? Why? Because it's resting. It's resting, resting, resting. Then we get the then we get what the breakout exactly like I've talked about with gold. I talked about with silver, potentially even the gold mining sector, right? And then even maybe some of the some of the indices, right? The, the S and P five hundred. If we start to break above some of those trend lines I've talked about in today's market update, then we could probably like it to start to see a really nice move to the upside when it comes to the um, that sector through there. Let's have a look at the uh, the ASX, which is the futures. Uh, ASX. Oh, let's go to all. Oh, no, sorry, not ASX. XJO. Right. The this is basically the the obviously the Australian market. Australian market actually had a very nice pullback. Look at that. Let's go through to here. That hourly chart, looking at this. Oh, look at that. Let's go to the 15 minute chart here. Oh, that's what we did, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, looking at that. And then now we're getting now we're getting a bit of a pullback here. But just remember, this is always the, the hardest. This is remember when we're looking at the markets, trend analysis is the most important thing. Because just because we're getting a pullback doesn't mean the sellers are in control. Right, a pullback is just a pullback. Um, remember the, the trend analysis. What do we have here? Low, higher low. This could just be what another higher low. This is the reason why I look at this here. Up, up, up. Then we get the pullback, 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 and then up, 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 up. Pullback, pullback, pullback. We could be getting up, 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 and then away we go again. Um, the big thing I like about the Australian market is that we're getting the thing that I'm seeing through there is that we are actually we have that level through there. And we've got this sort of squeezing action coming on right now. So let's go to the trend line. All right, and we probably have somewhere going on through there. So that's what's going on right now in the market. So um, Australian market is actually holding up, um, out, the Australian market is actually holding up quite strongly. And I expect to see Australian market do really well this decade because we, because I am in Australia, are very uh, mining uh, based. And the, this is the decade for the mining sector. Gold, silver mining sector is going to do really, really, really well this year compared to a lot of other assets, um, and so it's going to be the it's going to be the decade for the mining sector. Um, people think that's not going to be the case, but yeah, come to me, come to me in twenty thirty and see, and you tell me where where everything is, um, and then you can see that that I do believe we're going to start to see some really big movements in the Australian market because of that. and that's the reason why the Australian market really hasn't gotten hit too hard, um, as you can see. Um, and now we're actually just sort of squeezing through there. So 
There we go, traders. There's a bit of an update for you uh, across the markets through there. Um, the all in all thing is traders is that uh, again we just we just want to make sure that we're not chasing we're not chasing the herd mentality. If everyone is talking about something when it comes to these markets through here, and when it comes to just any of these markets, um, that's just 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 be careful of that. The best thing you want to do is you want to be waiting for things to that haven't made that haven't already made the move. If it's already made the move in the markets, you've missed the boat. Okay, just go look for something that hasn't made a big move, and then watch and wait for that move to come. Right? Because as I said before, like the same with let me bring on the Bitcoin chart here once again. Like, remember I said before, right? If I go back to here with, with Bitcoin, remember I said before that, like, the same thing for Bitcoin, right? It did nothing for quite some time. Then when we started to get the breakout, that's when we started to see the big move. But when we got, when we already had the big move and it ran up to 50,000, 80% of the move has already been done. So please don't chase the markets. Um, and, and just wait for these really good setups. So there we go, traders. Uh, once again, um, if you do need my help and you, you're struggling to trading right now, then grab a one hour coaching call with me for 90% off. And then also when you do that, I'm gonna give you free access to, I'm gonna give you for free, my Master Trader Lab beta $2,000. So very first thing in the description, guys, that's for the first 10 people, 10 people only. And I'll see you in the next update.